In this first example, we're trying to calculate the sum of the first eight terms of a geometric series. So we're told that it's geometric. That means we can get the common ratio and we can see that each time we're multiplying three to get the next term. So my common ratio is three. We're looking for the sum of the first eight terms. So n is eight. We can substitute into the formula. And because my common ratio is three, three minus one is two, I'm choosing the formula that will give me a positive number in the denominator. All right, so we can substitute in here. So term one is five, and we have a common ratio of three to the power of eight minus one. So then we can work out three to the power of eight, subtract one, multiply by five, divide by the denominator, and we've got the sum of the first eight terms. Next example here, my common ratio is one quarter. So I'm going to use this formula. One minus one quarter is gonna give me three quarters, so I still end up with a positive denominator. It's not the end of the world if you use the other formula. You'll just have to move that negative up at the end, and then and work that through. So we're going to start the same way. So we have eight terms. We're going to substitute into that formula. And then when we go to simplify this, I'm going to begin with the bracket, starting with this exponent piece. So one to the power of eight is one. Four to the power of eight, we can go ahead and work that out. And then in order to simplify this bracket, I need a common denominator. So a really quick way to do this is to say, okay, my com lowest common denominator is going to be the 65,536. So I know one over one is equivalent to 65,536 divided by 65,536. So what I'm just doing mentally is I'm taking that number and subtracting one from it, and that's going to give me 65,535 over that common denominator. So now we've got 64 times this divided by this whole piece. So another way of writing this, just so you can see what we're gonna do, is we're just this divide sign, I'm just writing like this. We know when we divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. So then in the next step, what we're gonna do is just change this to multiplication, and we're gonna reciprocate that fraction on the denominator. Now at this point, because we're multiplying three fractions, you can just multiply the numerators and you can multiply the denominators, which would give us those values. Really large numbers but they will reduce to our final answer. The other thing you can do at this point is when you see something like this maybe take a look and see okay this number is it divisible by 4 and it is so we can actually divide by 4 which will give us 1 and we can divide that by 4. Look for those common factors and divide those out to get numbers that are a little bit more manageable to work with. In this next one we are given the value of the last term and we're trying to find the sum of this particular series. So the first thing we're going to do is check is it geometric or arithmetic. Now this one tells us it's geometric so we're going to need that common ratio. I can find the common ratio by taking any term and dividing the term before it. So you might even want to go one quarter divided by one sixteenth because the numbers are a little bit smaller. But if we go one sixteenth divided by one sixty fourth, remember when you divide fractions we change division to a multiplication and we reciprocate that second fraction. So we end up with 64 divided by 16, which is four. So four is the common ratio we're going to substitute in. The last term is that 1024. The first term is that one over 64. And again, we've already figured out the common ratio. All right, so when we go to simplify this, first thing we have to do is simplify the numerator down as much as we can, and then the denominator down as much as we can before we divide. So I'm going to first of all multiply, we're using order of operations here, and then when we go to subtract these, we need a common denominator. So I can see that my lowest common denominator will be 64. So again, a quick way to do this is say, okay, I know I'm multiplying both the numerator and denominator here by 64. So I would go 4096 times 64 minus one, that's going to give us the numerator, and that denominator of 64 stays the same. And then when we divide fractions, change division to multiplication, and this three over one reciprocates to one over three. And then again, look for your common factors. So this numerator is divisible by three. Three divided by three is just one. So if I take that numerator, divide by three, we can get this value. And then there is no number that will divide evenly into the numerator and denominator. So that is your final answer. And again, we have a geometric series, so we're going to look for that common ratio. What are we multiplying negative 2 by to get to 4? Or you could just go 4 divided by negative 2, negative 2, negative 8 divided by 4, negative 2, get the ratio. And then we're just substituting into the formula. So we know the common ratio. The last term in this sequence is that negative 8,192. The first term is that negative 2. And then when you go to simplify, multiply those values first of all. And then remember, this is minus a negative. Multiply those signs to get a positive. So we're adding 2 to that numerator. And this is divisible by negative 3. So that is the sum of that series. We are now looking for the number of terms, so n, 
in this particular series. Now, the first thing we have to do is figure out, is it arithmetic, geometric, or neither? So in this case, we can see that we are multiplying by a common ratio of five each time. So a lot of this is just substituting into the formula. So we're going to start by entering term one. We've got the common ratio. We're looking for N. Now we do know the sum of the series is that 234,372. So we're now substituting that in the place of the sum, and we're looking to determine the number of terms. So again, the first thing you want to do is simplify this so I would probably subtract 5 minus 1 on the denominator to get 4 and then we can also see that 12 divided by 4 that will simplify down to 3 so we can go ahead and do that and then at this point we want to divide that 3 out so we're going to divide 3 on each side and when we do that 3 divided by 3 on the right is just going to be 1 and then on the left we can simplify it down to that value and then we're trying to isolate n so we're going to add 1 to each side and that will get the power by itself now at this point you kind of have have to do a little bit of guess and checking. So 5 to the power of what is going to give us this value? You can just try different exponents. You're going to eventually learn how to do this algebraically in another course, but we can try different things. Or if you remember the trick we did with arithmetic, can we get the same base? So 5 to the power of what will give us that, and then we can see that if the bases are equal, therefore the exponents are equal, so the value of n is 7. And then you can always check. So substitute back into one of the other formulas and see if you do in fact get that sum if there are seven terms in that series. And to conclude, we're going to take a look at an application question that comes from your textbook. So we have a tennis ball dropping from a height of 20 meters, and it tells us that each time it bounces, it's bouncing up to 40% of its previous height. So if I take 40% of 20, so 20 times 0.4, it's next going to bounce up to 8, and then it's next going to bounce up to 3.2 meters, etc. So my common ratio is going to be that 0.4. Each time it's bouncing less than the time before. So this ratio is going to be less than one. And we are ultimately looking for the total vertical distance the ball has traveled when it hits the floor for the sixth time. So at this point here, we can see vertically, it's gonna drop one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six drops. It's going to bounce one, two, three, four, five five bounces. If we add together the drops and the bounces, we're going to get the total vertical distance it's traveled. So the formula we're going to go with is this one here because my common ratio is 0.4, so I can substitute into the denominator. And then if we put all of the terms in, so term one on the drop, it is dropping 20 meters. That's our first term. We know the common ratio and it's going to drop six times. My bounce, the first bounce is going up to eight meters. So we're going to bounce up to eight meters and again, Again, we have the same common ratio, but this time it's bouncing five times. So if we go ahead and add those all together, we will eventually get the total vertical distance it's traveled. Another way some people like to approach this is to say there's six bounces in total. On each bounce, we're going up and we're coming down. So we're going to travel in theory, if I back this up to here, we're going to travel on our first term up 20 meters and down 20 meters. So that term one becomes 40, same common ratio, six bounces. However, you can see we're we're not actually going up 20 meters. We're going to subtract that initial bounce up and then we'll get the same total vertical distance.